Hey Mike. What? what? Who's got next? What's good, y'all? It's your man, Hezo, and welcome back to the Blacktop, where I always got next, you feel me? That call at the end of the game when Atlanta was down three on Trey was absolutely bullshit. That was a frustrating-ass loss, man. A very frustrating loss. Atlanta in Milwaukee, back-to-back -back for both teams. No Chris Middleton. A lot to dive into. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Leave a like on the video. We are on our way to 700 subs. Greatly appreciate all the help and support thus far. Let's keep this momentum going. And let's get right into it. That was a tough loss, man. Very tough loss. But I'm proud of the way these guys battled. It, it came down to the wire. And the first half really just started out. Brooke Lopez was on fire. Brooke Lopez was hitting everything he touched. This man was just shooting a basketball in the water. It was it was crazy the, what he was shooting from three. He started out five for five. Uh, Trey was really the only source of offense for Atlanta, really the entire first half. Well, not really the entire first half, but first quarter he had 17. Uh, I feel like Atlanta turned the ball a little bit, a little uh, turned the ball over a little bit too much in the first half. Drew Holiday really struggled to get going. He was not productive offensively. Giannis was not productive offensively. It was really the Bucks role players that really gave them the lead. They were hitting threes. They just got off to a hot start from three. The Bucks, I felt like they were just making everything from three from three. Atlanta was not closing out on shooters. Very frustrating first half. I think Atlanta was down eight going into the half. They went on a, uh, the Bucks went on a late first quarter run, but then Atlanta weathered the storm. They, you know, they did weather the storm, came back in, uh, came back, got into the game. AJ Griffin got some early minutes. That was nice to see. Got some early minutes in the first half. I thought maybe we're, you know, finally starting to see him in the rotation. Unfortunately, he did not play in the second half. It is what it is. Y'all already know how I feel about that. Second half was up and down. Down to the wire. It was it was a battle back and forth. Atlanta would go on a run. Milwaukee would answer the run. They would go up 11 points. But Atlanta just kept hanging around. Drew Holiday was on fire. Absolutely on fire in the second half. He couldn't miss. I think he made 10 straight shots from what they said. Unbelievable second half for Drew Holiday. He really was the... Not really the sole reason. Him and Giannis really was the, the reason why the Bucs ended up winning this game. And uh, Atlanta's defense, they just they couldn't string together enough stops, man. They couldn't string together enough stops for the whole second half. The offense started out just out the third quarter, just settling to, for too many jump shots, not really attacking. Giannis really started to get aggressive, getting to the rim, getting foul calls. It was just very frustrating to watch. Atlanta was so bad on the glass, just giving Milwaukee so many second chance opportunities. Giannis was just a beast. He kept getting fouled. He shot 19 free throws for the entire game. I'm going to touch on that in my final takes. Fourth quarter, crazily, Justin Holiday. He, he actually gave a spark. Finally, finally, Justin Holiday actually showed me something. He shot like four for four in the fourth quarter, gave Atlanta a nice spark. They went on a run, and really the fourth quarter, it was was anybody's ball game man it was anybody's ball game it was back and forth back and forth Trey was going crazy he had a 42 yeah, finished with 42 on the night but here's the thing man late in the fourth quarter he just he was settling too much man I felt like he was forcing shots he was playing too much hero ball trying to get the lead trying to hit like a huge not dagger shot obviously because it was way too close of a game but he was trying to hit that silencer type three to give the Hawks a two-point lead, three-point lead, whatever it was. He hit that one three to take the lead late in the fourth with about four and a half minutes left. But again, Milwaukee just comes back, man. Giannis just, when you let Giannis get downhill, you can't stop him. He's the best player in the league. He draws contact, and it's, it's actually very frustrating because it, there's, there's no defense you could play on him without him drawing contact. And there's a lot of calls that I felt like Milwaukee got a ton of calls. Again, I'm going to touch on that in my final takes. I want to talk about this last bullshit call in the fourth quarter. That call at the end of the game when Atlanta was down three on Trey was absolutely bullshit. Complete bullshit call. I don't care what nobody says. You will not convince me that was a good call. Bucks fans, I know you're probably going to say, oh, that was, that was that's what it's supposed to be called. Nah, man. Trey's six foot, 160 pounds soaking wet. There ain't no way that he was... I don't even know how they called him on an offensive foul for that. That was the, that decided the game. That obviously decided the game. Drew Holiday makes two free throws. They go up five. Just a nasty finish, man. Nasty, nasty finish. Poor offense or poor rebounding. 
Milwaukee's offensive rebounds in the fourth quarter was just incredible. Uh, the, the the free throw discrepancy in the fourth quarter, unreal, man. The, the Hawks didn't shoot one free throw the entire fourth quarter. And I don't know if that's just them sh settling for jump shots or just a lack of calls. Y'all let me know. I'll, I'll let y'all decide that. Real quick, before I get into my final takeaways for the game, I think late in the fourth quarter, you can tell that Trey was starting to get tired. And I think that caught up to him and that maybe that's why he was settling for a little bit more jump shots as opposed to getting to the rack, getting to his floater. But either way, I mean, I'm not saying that the shots were bad shots, but they also were definitely settling shots for, for threes. And I think maybe that was fatigue. Obviously coming off a of back-to-back, -back, the way the, the type of player he is, the way that he had to carry the offensive load the entire game. I mean, it was really just him and DeJounte the entire fourth quarter. I think there was only one other player that attempted a shot in the entire fourth quarter outside of the Justin Holiday uh little bit run that he had. And that was and that was JC. And another quiet game for JC. Just very, very, very frustrating. So my final takeaways for this game, number one, Trey, another excellent offensive game. Obviously was not enough down the stretch of the game. He just didn't really have much help. It, it's kind of, it's like I said, it's, it's very frustrating to see. He didn't have much help outside of DeJounte Murray, I think finished with 21. Other than that, guys just weren't, I don't think they were getting enough shots to be honest with you, which leads me to my next point. JC, man, where are you? JC has now, he has eight shot attempts in the last two games. He finished with four points tonight and four points last night. If the Hawks are going to make a run and be with the top teams, JC has to get involved in the offense. And I'm not even really putting it all on him. He has shot poorly from threes over the last couple games. After that, the fire start that he had the first couple games of the season, just back-to-back 23-24 point games, he's been kind of quiet ever since, ever since and it's very frustrating. They're not giving him touches in the post to face up and get to his mid-range jump shot. You know, they're not getting to the pick and roll with him. I don't think that he's getting enough involved in the offense. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Is it on JC? Is it on the way that the point guards are playing? Again, Jason, or, uh, Trey and DeJounte both playing solid, but other guys have to get involved. It can't just be a one-man show. Number three, the defense. The defense just did not play well the whole game. First half, it was kind of rocky. Second half, rocky as well. Not closing out on shooters. Uh, uh, Milwaukee was just getting more, too many threes off letting it fly and Atlanta just couldn't string together enough stops that was primarily why they could not climb and really take control in the fourth quarter even with making a huge run and going on a huge run they just could not get enough stops which leads me to my next point the fouling the fouling was just absolutely ridiculous I don't even know what to say man the Hawks shot 15 free throws the entire game, which includes zero in the fourth quarter, and Giannis shot 19 free throws for the whole game single-handedly. That's just, that's unacceptable, man. And I'm not, I'm not putting that on Atlanta for the, for really, that's a lot on officiating, man. That's, Giannis was getting every single call. Every call. There was no defense you could play against him. It was a foul. Very frustrating to watch. Giannis is my favorite player. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Giannis is my favorite player. But it's I, I hate when he goes up against Atlanta because he, we have no way to guard him. And he lives at the free throw line. My final takeaway for this game, I touched on a little bit earlier, the rebounding. Just too many second chance opportunities for the Bucs, which did lead to a lot of fouls, lead to those three-point opportunities. Poor rebounding. They were just out hustling Atlanta. There was a lot of times where Giannis would miss a free throw and Milwaukee would get the offensive rebound and turn it into a three three point play, potentially a four point play. Unacceptable rebounding. I, I really feel like Okongwu was doing a better job when he was in the game rather than Clint Capella. I feel like he was doing a better job defensively on Giannis. Y'all let me know what you think about that. That's just my opinion. I'm going to pretty much leave it there, man. Not as long as a recap as I normally do. My apologies for that, but it is a little bit later. I want to get this recap out for y'all. At the end of the day, we are 4-2. and two. It was a very frustrating loss. But look, man, it could be a lot worse. We could be like the Nets who are sitting at 1-5 and five who lost again tonight. Just, they look pathetic. So let's look at the bright side. We are 4-2. and two. We are still 2-1 and one on this road trip. Let's make adjustments. We'll bounce back, I think, against Toronto on Monday, which is Halloween. Hopefully we get it. We can get a dub. Leave your thoughts down in the comments. What did you think about this game? What did you think about Trey's performance? All that type of stuff. What do you see happening in the Toronto game and the rest of this road trip? Leave a like on the video and I will catch y'all next episode.